I was diagnosed in January of 2022 uh, with neuroendocrine carcinoma, which is a very rare uh, cancer. And um, with that said, uh, a terminal diagnosis and um, something I was totally not expecting. I was in very good health, so I thought. Melissa and I are on a cruise to the top captain for 10 months because shot spotter said that he was probably the one that did it and he wasn't. And so that's why there's a controversy about sponsorship. The AP had to for me, it would mean a sense of peace. Peace for me. Peace before I, need, before I go to be peaceful, like the end of my life. Um, the pe it would give me peace here, the, in the here and now. In the here and now. And... Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid of dying because I know I'm going to die. I already know that. I've had too many people tell me that. It's inarguable. Inarguable. But um, I'm, I'm a little f afraid of how I'm going to die, what it's going to look like. Um, and, what, and, again, how it's going to affect my family, what they're going to see. You know, I, I want to go out just like Here's the synopsis of it really quick. Okay. Back in 1847, think of how many newspapers were in New York City. You just think how small New York City was. Twelve. I'm going to sabotage chicks. No. Oh. And all of a sudden there's going to be this hole in it. And actually it got somewhat violent. And so... You know, I go to sleep at night thinking about, you know, um, what, what, what my life would look like if I had that peace of mind if I had that control over the end and what it was going to look like. And all I can keep doing is keep sharing my knowledge and helping people understand the absolute need for this. It's a need not only for me, but for people with the terminal illness. Yeah, we'll see what I can do. I mean, if you, I, mean I know it's, it's, it's a weekend, but... I'm not worried about the weekend. Oh, okay. I'm not one of those people worried about punching a clock between nine to five. Um, like you said, we all have to make choices in our lives, but this is this is a big one. This is really this is really big. So um, I, I I think you know people understanding that this isn't something that is just a fly by night thing. You know, like a quick decision. It's not a quick decision. You have to. I I want people to think of all the parameters. I want them to have all their questions answered so that they can make an informed decision. I want to have the right to make an informed decision. When I'm told by the doctors that I'm a miracle that I'm still here, I think that there's a reason I'm still here and I still have some unfinished business. And I think part of that is my uh, desire to really advocate for medical aid in dying. That's my passion right now. That's something that I really believe in. I was a pickleball freak, and I still am. I, I can't play nearly as much as I used to, but I try to on my good days. Um, yeah, so what was my life going to be like? What, how was it going to change? Um, how can I beat this, even though there's no beating it? I was clearly told that by many doctors. There's no beating it. There's, and I think that that's probably the hardest thing to communicate to my family is people think, well, they're going to come up with, you know, a cure, and you're going to, you know, you're going to be okay, and it's going to be okay. But accepting the fact that it, it is, it isn't going to be okay. But what am I going to do with the time that I have here, on this earth? How am I going to make it the best that it can be for me? And I want it to be remembered in a positive light that was very important for me. Look at all the hairstyles of us. Like, look at how young we are here. Yeah. Look at those hairstyles, oh my God.